Okay, hey, it's uh, Jason with RPC Electronics, and uh, this is Lesson 10 of the Equal Tutorial. Uh, in this lesson, I'm going to uh, cover uh, any kind of final preparation of the board uh, as far as placement, and then we're going to uh, do silkscreen layer uh, generation, and we're going to uh, lead into Lesson 11, which will be running the CAM files to create our Gerber files. Uh, the files that would be uh, submitted to a board house and then uh, I've decided that the whole tutorial win with lesson 12 and lesson 12 is going to cover any questions that I've been getting uh, mostly in comments and personal emails I'm gonna try to cover um, I'm gonna actually try to give visual examples and solutions to some of the questions I've been getting so lesson 12 probably won't come for a while but I'm gonna try to get 10 and 11 out real soon uh, well, 10 obviously uh, once you're seeing this and then hopefully 11 right behind it. So first things first, um, one thing I want to point out is if you remember in lesson 9 when we when we created our copper pour, um, we had to actually create a, a border of our copper pour with, dotted, with a dotted line. So I'm, I'm going to open up lesson 10's board and if you notice it looks like our copper pour is missing. It's gone. It's not actually missing. It's actually right here in the dotted line, just like we had the first time. But if you also recall in lesson nine, in order to show that copper pour, even once we established the border, we had to use the rat's nest tool to actually get it to show up. And that's the same case here. Anytime the file is closed and reopened, the copper pour is by default going to show up again as just the dotted border. So all we're going to have to do is hit a rat's nest tool and there we have it, our copper pour is back. So no worries. Okay, uh, so we've got our copper pour, we've got all of our parts, everything's been routed, we're all pre pretty, we're pretty much there, we're, we're happy with our design. And the next best thing, or the next step is to somehow indicate all these parts in directions such as diodes and LEDs on the board when when you send this uh, design off to a board house they're going to be looking for a silkscreen layer and the silkscreen layer is what actually is indicators on the board of all these parts and it's usually done in white but it depends on the board house sometimes they can do it in different colors as we see it right now the indicators that we see is actually an internal indicator in the software this actually is not going to show up on the board until we actually create a layer to represent these markings. So in order to do that, the easiest thing to do is run a script. And the particular script that I like to use, I actually found online. I, it's not a script that comes with Eagle. But if you go to this link, the down here at the bottom of the uh, video, I have uploaded the silkscreen script as well as um, a, a cam script that we will use in lesson 11 to produce our Gerber files so if you go there download these files uh, you'll be able to use the same ones I'm using but in the time for the time being we're gonna go ahead and use the script that I already have loaded and if you look up here at the top of the uh, menu bar there's uh, an SCR and a ULP button the ULP button is what we're looking for and if you've already downloaded the file and load and saved in your ULP folder, you'll see silk underscore gen dot ULP. So I'm gonna double click on that, and it's gonna come up and say I can't find the silk screen layer. And no, it can't because we don't have one yet. So we can't, there's not one there for the software for Eagle to see to open. So that's okay. We're gonna just hit OK. Here, this is setting some of the settings for the script. In in most cases, you're not gonna need to change any of this. So just go ahead and click mix silk screen layers this window here is actually going to show what it's going to do to create all the silk screen markings again unless you're really interested in reading this it doesn't matter you don't need to read this the script is already doing this for you so we're going to click execute and you'll notice that it's just taken just about every marking and marked it with yellow and that yellow is our silk screen layer if I was to go to our layers menu and actually turn off these silk screen layers you can see the silk screen has disappeared and if I go back and add it there's our silk screens again and as usual save often it's free <laughs> and saves you a lot of headache in the long run now you'll notice that 
all the markings have been set up in silkscreen and and you may find that you want to uh, move these around or delete them um, I'm just going to delete a couple of things just for example for one I'm going to delete this uh, indicator of, of what type of power jack it is I'm also going to delete uh, these capacitor values in in the most case in most cases you're going to have this indicate on your schematic and it's not as going to be as important to have it on the board itself it's kind of taking up a lot of space and especially in this case where uh, if you could and let me go ahead and just do an undo real quick you can see that this is actually overlapping one of our pads now I can actually take this and grab it and move it and right click to rotate it like normal in fact that's what we'll do we'll go ahead and grab it and we'll just stick it right there and we'll grab C1 and we'll bring it down here and make it um, align with C2 so now it, it looks a little bit nicer and you can do that with anything you want on the board as far as silk screen is concerned you can grab any of these silk screen parts and move them around and man manipulate them so I'm gonna go ahead and save that and we'll go ahead and stop the lesson there and in lesson 11 we'll take care of creating our Gerber files and uh, we'll, we'll see you in lesson 11